What's up everyone? Today is Monday and yes you guessed it correctly that means I can finally get a haircut because the headrest is allowed to open again. Hallelujah, thanks for that. And you also get another episode with the wine science commentary. Highly interesting topic, what happens when you ferment red grapes and white grapes together. Does that improve your wine quality, yes or no? If you like the content, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. That's it from my side, let's get going. All right guys, let's get going. This week's paper is called Co-fermentation of Syrah with Viognier, Evolution of Color and Phenolics during Winemaking and Bottle Aging. Head researcher here was Luis Federico Casasa together with some people from the Washington State University. And the research was published in 2012 in the American Journal of Enology and Viticulture. So this is uh, Luis Federico Casasa, handsome young man. Assistant Professor for Enology at Cal Poly State University, has a PhD in Food Science and further down here you find some selected publications of his, so it's very interesting stuff and I highly recommend reading up on that if you want. Introduction guys. Two of the most common cultivars in the Rhone Valley of France are the red variety Chira and the white variety Viognier, which appear to be genetic siblings. Thus, it's not surprising that they eventually were blended during winemaking. Okay, so this blending during winemaking, this is called co-fermentation, and it's a winemaking technique which originates from the small Côte de Tia appellation in Northern Rhone, 300 hectares there. Um, yeah, almost exclusively Syrah, but here you can blend up to 20% of Viognier into your red ferment, but most producers do only like 5% or less. But you have to cover mint. You cannot do individual batches and then blend afterwards. No, you have to cover mint. And this technique aims or aimed is aimed to increase wine color. So an anecdotal evidence suggests that copper minted Syrah and Viognier wines display higher and more stable color than the unblended Syrah wines themselves. Interesting. This color enhancement has been attributed to the contribution of the skin flavonol of the white grapes. So flavonols are soluble phenols, guys. You find them in the white grapes as well in the red grapes. But the idea is that you introduce some, some an extra pool of uh, flavonols from the deriving from the white grapes, which then co-pigment yeah, with the anthocyanins, which gives then a more stable color and a bit of a variation in color due to the hyperchromic shift and batochromic shift. So what is that? So the hyperchromic shift, guys, is as you see this shift of this curve towards the upside here. So you have a higher absorption of light, meaning you have an enhancement of the overall color. And the batochromic effect is the shift towards the right here, towards the longer wavelength side. And um, this gives you a wine, a bit of a bluish taint, a bit of a bluish tinge. Um, and these two things are, yeah, favored in winemaking, I would say. So this is um, the common results or effects of co-pigmentation. So materials and methods. They took um, the grapes from the Columbia Valley AVA. So the Columbia AVA is a cross-border AVA between Oregon and Washington. But I think these grapes here came from the Washington side since the researchers are also from Washington. And then experimental design. So I created a small PowerPoint here but it's very easy to understand what they did. So we have four treatments. We have the control treatment, which consisted of 100% Syrah fermentation or 100% Syrah wine. In the treatment two, um, to the control there was added 5% of Viognier, so some white grapes. Treatment three, they added 10% Viognier, and treatment four, they added 20% they added tw uh, Viognier. So um, yeah, a bit of increase from treatment to treatment, and then they crushed and they stemmed these grapes together and they added some SO2. Every single fermentation was done in triplicate so that you can do some um, yeah, statistics afterwards. And two punch downs plus two pump overs per day. And um, then of course the malolactic fermentation was um, executed. And afterwards the wines were bottled under screw cap. And then the major analysis were done at pressing. Then at 150 days after bottling, 260 days after bottling, and 580 days after bottling. So that way we can see the evolution of um, this certain um, parameters that they measured. Then now let's look at some results here. So first of all, this is table one and it shows us the initial bricks, pH and TA after crushing for the different treatments here. 
and overall we have quite some differences in the Brix pH and TA values but um, yeah the highest Brix values for instance we find in the 20% um, VONE addition which is not very surprising because VONE accumulates sugar very fast so that's why you find the highest Brix values here but also in terms of pH we have the lowest values here and the highest TA levels but then at winemaking at bottling the ethanol levels are the same the pH levels are the same and the TA levels are the same for all the treatments so you see all these differences here we are diminished and the wines um, came out quite similar then now it's gonna get interesting here here we see um, the evolution of certain compounds such as anthocyanins, flavanols, uh, tannins and phenols over the aging uh, time so seven days after bottling 150 days 260 days and 580 days after bottling and for the anthocyanins here guys we see of course we have a decrease of anthocyanins throughout our aging because of course anthocyanins co-pigment they get absorbed they get oxidized so you see you have a decrease but what is interesting to see is that the 20% VUNI addition which is this treatment here has the lowest amount of anthocyanins yeah for each time point so at seven days at 150 days yeah at 260 days and 580 days and you see we have this trend here so the more VUNI that was added the less the anthocyanins were in the wine and um, the same accounts for the flavonols so you see here where we have 20% addition of VUNI we have least amount of total flavonols okay and this is this is quite interesting because the idea of co-fermentation is that you add an extra pool of flavonols so you have a um, more co-pigmentation co going on but down here they write in a similar co-fermentation experiment it was hypothesized that Syrah has naturally high concentrations of flavonols and that an addition of VNA will only have a dilution effect on cofactors and that's exactly what we see here so the anthocyanins got diluted the flavonols got diluted and we don't have an increase of um, yeah, any of these compounds due to the addition of VNA and um, in terms of protein precipitable tannins and iron reactive phenols we don't have any difference at all you see we have the same letters here meaning indifferent statistically all right then let's go on let's look at some chromatic properties um, this is the c-lab um, values here it expressed as lightness in this case here so lightness means um, yeah the, the higher the value the lighter your color is in terms of color so the more transparent it gets and you see here already this is the this is the VUNE 20% uh, VUNE uh, treatment and you see we have the lightest color here throughout all the yeah aging periods okay um, and then let's look at this here saturation what is saturation saturation means uh, the more saturation the more rich your color is okay and the lower the saturation is the more grayish kind of um, tinges you have in the color and then you see that with the 20% VUNE addition we have already quite low saturation compared to the yeah, control or 5% VUNE addition but not really any statistical differences as it seems but there's a kind of a trend there and one more thing I wanted to show you is this table here table 3 which uh, shows the evolution of C lab color difference Delta E in the co-fermentation treatments relative to the control at day 7 and 580 days okay and what this tells us actually is that um, if you see a number here greater than 5 then per definition that means that if you give a random panel this wine here together with a control they are able to tell a difference in color okay so there's a perceivable difference a noticeable difference in color and this was only the case for the 20% VONE additions because you see the value is greater than 5 and in the other treatments compared to the control the value is smaller than 5 all right so far so good guys <clears throat> and uh, this is not so very interesting for us but let's come to the conclusion although the basic composition of the wines was unaffected by the co-fermentation treatment VUNE additions greater than 10% lowered most chromatic parameters in the final wines indicating no hyperchromic or butterchromic shift 
no differences were observed for tannins and iron reactive phenolics after 580 days and additions of Viognier at 20% led to a lower concentration of anthocyanins and flavonoids. So we saw this dilution effect. Um, overall, these results suggest that additions of Viognier grapes to Syrah grapes at the rates studied here do not result in an enhancement of the chromatic and phenolic composition of the final wines. Um, yeah, quite interesting guys. Um, what do we learn here actually? We saw that the more Viognier we added to our red ferment, the more flavonols and anthocyanins got diluted and um, yeah it's interesting because it's quite the opposite what is written in in books and what we read sometimes and um, i think of course wine color is a bit over over overrated in winemaking because the best wines um, on our planet are light colored wines barolos brunellos pinot noirs and so on and so forth and covermenting for me is more a question of style. You get a different, um, yeah, smell to your wine and so on. So it's it's more a question of, of, of style than for me, yeah, than enhancing the color. All right. What an episode again, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and stay tuned for my next week. We'll find out if older vineyards produce the better fruit than younger vineyards. Very interesting topic. And uh, that's it from my side, um, stay safe, stay sober, or just stay safe, and uh, see you next week, cheers.